Your voice can change the world. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And my first guest is Angela Angel Session. And she's definitely an angel. She sings like an angel. For Best Female Vocalist, R&B Song of the Year, number one chart-topping artist, songwriter of the year, top trending artist, and adult contemporary song of the year, Angel Sessions, new single, You Will Always Be My Baby, is now released with over one million streams on SoundCloud, is nominated for six awards at the Star Soul Fame Awards 2021. And my next guest, the talented Jacqueline Ivane, has been creative all her life, beginning with drawing and painting throughout her grade school years. However, it wasn't until she picked up a camera in her early 20s that she found that what would eventually become her creative niche and tool, a visual artist emphasizing storytelling, issues impacting both youth and adults. She incorporates both film and photography. More than three, she has been producing more than 300 projects over the past few years. Angel and Jacqueline, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you so much for having us today. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, the pleasure is wonderful. This has been taking the time, but before we start, we want to give a shout out and thank our friend uh, Luetta Hill Dudley. She made this possible for us to come together. Yes, she did. Thank you, yeah. Luella. Yeah, thank you, Lorel. Love you. Oh, Luella, thank you. So I want to start with you, Angel. I tell you, this list for you ladies goes on and on. It's so impressive. Um, you've worked and recorded with Lenny Williams, Frida Payne, the Delphonics, Brenda Holloway, the Dramatics, the late Ollie Wilson. Love Ollie Wilson. We used to go see him at Marla Gibbs Memory Lane. So he was one of the best song uh, artists. Mary Wilson of the Supremes, Maurice White, lead singer of Earth, Wind, and Fire, the Dells, and the Stylistics. What was that experience? Talk to us about working with those giants. Well, first of all, I love working with each and every one of them. You know, um, it was first of all, like learning from them as a young artist at the time of meeting them. I was the new artist on Vote Records and working with these legends, it was a dream come true because my mom, um, used to listen to them a lot when, you know, when, when I was just a little girl and playing their music all the time and had all their records, I would have never thought a dream to even meeting with them and one day recording with them, but I love their records. I mean, I just love music so much. Listening to my mom play her records over and over and she would always tell me, when are you going to go outside and play? And I just didn't want to because I just love listening to this music. It just drew me in. So finally getting a chance to meet with them and recording background vocals on their records and doing duets with them and, and touring with them. It was, it was just the most wonderful thing because they're very down to earth. You know, Mark, um, William Hart of the Delphonics was definitely, you know, um, a good friend of mine that I love, you know, um, learning from him and Lenny Williams, learning from him and Maurice, you know, and so many. And, and even when I recorded with Ollie Woodson, I remember the day he had a really bad cold and I felt so I don't know like intimidated singing with him because he sounds so wonderful and we had to be in the booth together to do the song vow and um he told me girl don't, don't worry about it go ahead and sing girl you got it and um so I did and the song turned out beautiful and it's just refreshing you know and just being with them is just a wonderful humble experience I mean just for for the people, you know, like me and the audience watching them perform, especially Earth, Wind and Fire and Ollie Woodson and the Temptations and the Supremes, you were just in awe of these legends. So moving on to you, Jacqueline, 
how long have you been involved in filmmaking? And, and, and with that question, also tell us what type of projects have you produced? Well, I've the indie filmmaking about 15 years, uh, maybe a bit over 15 years, but I've actually been in production, uh, film, uh, cable access production for probably um, 25 years. So, but in, in terms of focusing on the indie films, um, I work primarily with short films. Um, and I recall my very first uh, short film was Who Let the Dogs In? And it was with my dogs and it starred a gentleman, uh, Paul Williams, who played the neglected husband. So the dogs receiving more attention than uh, he did. And then the second short film, and uh, Angel, you will know, uh, Pauletta Hickerson, she was the actress that starred in my short film called Peephole, which was a thriller. And uh, Pauletta is better known as Percy May today. She is a comedian uh, best known for her, um, her um, clean comedy. And so those were the, the first two films. So primarily short films. However, I have done uh, two uh, feature length documentaries. Uh, one was called the um, Out of the Darkness, which focused on suicide uh, loss and suicide survivors. And that was a really powerful documentary because it really um, talked about um, uh, the suicide among Blacks. And also it uh, highlighted the 1,200 people at that time that had jumped from the Golden Gate Bridge. So it, it was really a very powerful piece. The second documentary, feature length documentary, was one called um, Archangel. And it um, basically was um, based upon a behavior, an adult behavioral day program for adults that had um, a mental challenge. Very powerful um, documentary. And I loved working on that. I really felt that I walked away with 30 new friends <laughs> and just so much about this beautiful, compassionate, caring, very open and want to be just like everybody else group of people. And so that was a really uh, wonderful opportunity for me as well. Yeah, sounds like it. You know, as I, we spoke, Jacqueline, and I told you I'm on the, uh, one of the committee members for the African American Film Festival here. And hopefully, you know, sometime next year, we can view some of your films. That's been the hope. You know, before we move on, I want to ask you, ladies, how did, because you're both, you're, you're actors, you're, you're storytellers, visual artists, how did COVID affect you, Angel? Um, it just makes me a, I don't know, more empowered woman just to be, you know, to inspire other women, you know, to be all that you can be. and to always trust in God most than anything else because you know I can never do this by myself. So I don't never credit myself for anything or in the gifts that God has given me, but just knowing it's all for God's glory. And this is the purpose of why I'm doing it, you know, and to be inspiring by other young, beautiful women from all around the world, you know, and letting them know that whatever you have that's possible, you know, you can dream big, but just work at it. But most of all, trust God and and just let him lead and guide you and whatever that is and, and do it all for his glory. Oh, do it all for his glory. So Angel, I, I mean, uh, Jacqueline, so you're in the film festival business. How has COVID affected your filmmaking? Well, it, it actually had a big impact on the filmmaking industry, um, particularly that first year uh, when we were on lockdown. Um, those of us that were responsible weren't trying to, to uh, be in a group of uh, with film crews and actors live. So uh, we were uh, pretty much affected, uh, you know, from COVID. We, um, I ended up having to really think out of the box because I just wasn't making any films. 
and none of my colleagues that I knew were making any films. So thinking out of the box, I had to come up with more creative things to do. And so I work with youth. One of the things that I did with my youth was have them do self-taping exercises. Um, I put together a film project, Kids on COVID, and um, based upon the pandemic, I wanted to find out how they felt uh, how they were faring through this, you know, through this pandemic. And so I put together an information sheet of, about the project. Um, I put together um, activities for them to do and how to hold the camera and different techniques and things like that. And so they would self-tape, email me the footage. I would give them suggestions and uh, maybe talk to them about changing the background or projecting more, or speaking up more, different things like that. Some of them would get discouraged and I try to let them know, you know, on a, if this was an actual film production, we might be doing 50 takes for one scene. So that would kind of help them along. But we had to kind of think out the box and we ended up with a beautiful 15 minute short, uh, Kids on COVID, that was Fantastic. The kids did a great job. And also we did a, a film called um, Free Milk. And it was, um, this was eight adults, four women and four uh, men, all under 30. And, uh, and I say that because I'm a mature woman <laughs> working with these young people. And so we ended up doing a short film called Free Milk that really debated the concept of um, uh, marry or um, move in or marry. And uh, it, it, it worked out excellent. And the whole film was completed on Zoom. So, wow. it, and it's a comedy. So it, the whole film was completed on Zoom and it turned out really great. Oh, good. <laughs> That's good out news. The <laughs> it's good to hear some good news, you know, from COVID. So Angel, how did you, Bill, having your albums introducing Angel Sessions and Love Ride released on Ichiban Records and Sack Folk Records. How did I feel having those released? Yeah. Man, it was like, it was totally like a blessing because prior to that happening, I had been shopping a deal for like, like a lot of years, because I started this thing since I was a little girl in 1992, when I had my first manager. And um, she had a husband who was a road manager of SWV, Bev, Bev DeVoe, and so many other great artists. And so she had started her company called Majestic Management. She was looking for a young um, female artist. And so she auditioned, um, came to the Bay Area and auditioned six girls. And she ended up picking me. And one of the reasons why is because she said we were both from Louisville, Kentucky. That's where I'm originally from. And that's where she was from. And she loved my personality. And um, so we started kind of like from there bonding together and recording so many songs. As, as a songwriter, I had a, like over 500 songs eventually before Love Ride Inch Bond came around in 1998. So I was shopping. I was doing all kind of audition. I performed in front of lots of labels. It was this company. It was this um thing in Los Angeles, California called Best of the West. Uh, best of the West competition, Budweiser, best of the West Budweiser competition. And that was before American Idol and all that started. So best, so the Budweiser competition was huge at that time in Los Angeles, California. So you had Sony in, in uh, Universal, Warner Brothers, all the labels were there, RCA labels, everyone was there scouting talent. So I was there and I auditioned and um, I've had many opportunities and there were times that I would get really nervous. At that time, I was scared to perform in front of all these people, seven, 800 people. At that time, it was a lot of people at that time for me. So I had stage fright. <laughs> and um, I remember RCA wanted to sign me. And they kept saying, you know, Angel, like, no, girl, RCA wants to sign you. And I was like so scared, like, like in my mind, I'm saying, well, please stop telling me that. I just don't want to keep hearing that because you're going to make me mess up. You know, and I got on stage and I did mess up. And it was just... A, a terrible thing. So when I finally met the late Fred Pittman, and um, he knew all the old school acts, all the legendary acts that I had actually got a chance to meet later on um, to sign them to Stax Boat Records, he was looking for an artist that he wanted to sing his song called She Was Never Her that he had written. 
and in hopes that if that single does well, we'll do an album. But Ichiban said, no, we want an album on Angel. So we went into my catalogs and all the songs I had, I placed these seven songs of mine on that album. And then the rest um, of the songs were placed by Preston Glass, who wrote for so many great you know, artists, you know, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, he worked with Norton, Michael Warden. And so he um, produced on my album, my first album and my second album and many other great producers. And so that album came out, Introduced the Angel. And so, of course, I was ecstatic because I didn't, you got to understand being a young artist wanting so bad to have a record deal and so many, you know, today it seems it's not easy today, but it's a little easier to, to do it yourself because you have social media. But back then you had to package it up and go to the post office and mail it off and have meetings. It was a lot of grinding. I had a lot of grinding to do. So when I finally was able to do that, it was totally a wonderful thing, even though it didn't do what I wanted because they eventually folded in 1999, which is what made, led me to Saxfold Records um, because Ichiban label folded in 1999. And so when I went with them, I was able to, work with these other great artists that also were, that was the deal. Hey, Fred, if you can get these artists, we'll sign Angel. But you got to get all these great artists and we'll do a deal with Angel. And that's what he did. And that's how Love Ride became. Ah, uh, congratulations. Congratulations. It takes a village. So Jacqueline, what inspired you to get involved in photography? I started, um, uh, I actually got involved many years ago. <laughs> I won't say how many years ago, but um, I, I found a Nikon uh, 35 millimeter film camera at, at a thrift store. And so I just uh, fell in love with that camera and took off running. And so I was just taking pictures everywhere. And I had this opportunity, two opportunities that uh, came to me very, very early on. Uh, the first one, I had a chance to uh, photograph uh, Brock Peters in his home. Uh, and Brock Peters was the gentleman, the black man that uh, played uh, in To Kill a Mockingbird. Tom Robinson was his character um, and in To Kill a, a Mockingbird. And um, exciting for me to be able to be in his home and photograph him. Uh, I also photographed he and his wife together. And then I later found out that my photograph of him and his wife was the only photograph of any photographer that they actually displayed in their home. So that was really exciting for me. And then the second opportunity came when I had a chance to uh, do a casual uh, photography shoot with Muhammad Ali in his home. And listening to Angel talk about how frightened she was at one time, I was so scared being in the company of someone so great as Muhammad Ali, I could barely hold my camera. So what he did, he literally walked up to me and started doing magic tricks for me. And he did several magic tricks. And that is the only thing that calmed me down where I was able to go ahead and complete this photo shoot. A lot of people don't realize that he, he was a magician as well. He was also an artist. So those two uh, opportunities really inspired my photography. And I'm, I'm still a photographer. I've been doing photography for many, many, many years. And so that's how I got started. <laughs> wow, that's, that's the story. You know, the late, the late great Muhammad Ali and... and Rock Peters. Also. Rock Peters, too. That's... To yeah. Hollywood. That's Hollywood all the way. So, Angel, what did it feel like being a Supreme with Mary Wilson, the late, great Mary, Mary Wilson? Wow. Now, I'm glad you asked that question because that was totally a great experience. I've been knowing with my friend Karen Newman. She had been touring with Mary Wilson at that time, it was around seven years prior to me meeting Mary. And I'll go back to the story of 1999. Mary Wilson was auditioning for the new uh, Supremes. So I auditioned to be a part of that. But at that time, there was going to be, if you guys remember, 
the Supreme reunion with Diana Ross, Mary Wilson, and um, I forget the other Supreme name. And that situation was kind of a a lot going on in the media at the time when it just wasn't working out. Mary was not ups- happy about it. She was a little upset because the finance wasn't what she asked for. So when she tried to put this Supreme together, it didn't work out. So I didn't hear back from her until 2004 when they were actually looking for another Supremes because they had a young lady and then they had to let, they let her go. And so Karen said, hey, hey, Angel girl, I've been telling Mary Wilson's manager all about you. You know, I know you can do it, girl. I'm like, really? You think that they'll have me tour with her? She said, yeah, girl, I'm, I'm trying to work it out. She said, but I'm, the manager's going to call you. So be expecting your call and they're going to put you on the plane. You're going to be here really fast. She said, just wait for the call. So I'm like, okay. You know, so she set it up. The manager called me and he heard my Love Right album. And he said, I love your voice. You're, 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 you're perfect for this. We were looking for a soprano and um, we want to fly you in to Mary Wilson's house. She lived in Vegas at that time. We're going to fly you in. We're going to have you to meet Mary, spend some time with her, let her talk to you, let her get to know you, and then go from there. And I said, great. And so she flew me in, went to her house, had dinner with her. She talked to me all about the Supremes, all about her background, where she started, how she was the one who started the Supremes. She told me a lot of great stories. And then she told me about their shows and what to learn here. She showed me all these beautiful gowns and dresses we're going to be wearing. And then I had to sign an, an disclosure contract agreement saying that, of course, that I would, you know, not be a Supremes as far as doing my own thing, which I wasn't going to do that, you know, but it was just a contract I had to agree to assign to. I was just happy to do so and um, start touring with her, you know, as a Supremes and um, end the show with Donna, Donna Summer Song, Last Dance. So it was just a wonderful experience. And at that time, I was like, you know, when you're in the water swimming, you're not thinking about all this, whoa, like a big fan. You're just thinking, this is work. I got to do what I got to do. And I'm going to be the best I can be because I ain't trying to let Mary down. You know, and that's all. I was just focused more on just, I got to get these songs. I got to get these steps. Okay, does the stress fit right? Okay, okay, I'm going to make sure, you know, that I want to look the part. You know, my focus was so on just making sure I did what I'm supposed to do to make Mary proud. It's all about sisterhood, lifting each other up. I love that story. I'm loving these stories, ladies. So Jacqueline, what are you working on today? Well, um, we just finished um, a couple of projects and I mentioned the one kids on COVID um, and we, the, uh, the students also just completed a project uh, called Positively You, the Beauty of Our Diversity. And uh, that one really focused on uh, the cultural differences in our community and um, the the youth had an opportunity to share their um, opinions on um, um, racism and, and, you know, the differences and, and what they enjoyed about our differences and how they, you know, objected to people um, complaining about our differences. And so that turned out really uh, well. That was a, a great project. And um, we are looking to, uh, we're just in a very, very, early uh, development stages of a project that we will be uh, doing in spring. So we're just in the early stages of that. I'm working uh, with the youth on that one. So um, that's it for right now. Well, that's it sounds like your place is full <laughs> to me. My goodness. Angel, Angel, what is your plan for 2022? Yes. Well, I have a company called Atlas Elite Entertainment. And we started that in 2017. So for 2022, I'm going to be really focused on my two artists that I have, which is Shardell Sessions. That's my daughter. And she's an R&B recording artist. And my other hip-hop recording artist, Way. And they got new projects coming out. Uh, my daughter has an album coming out. And Way has an EP coming out. And I also have and two albums coming out. I have a, an R&B album coming out called Angel Sessions Best of R&B and an EP coming out, which is going to be my urban gospel. I don't have a name for it yet. And this Saturday, I'm going to the studio to record um, my new gospel song for that. So I'm going to be focused on that. I got a show coming up. I think it's going to be for the, the, the Black Expo. I think it's coming up in February. So I'm going to be performing in that one. Um, so I'm just going to be focused on 
a lot of great things happening oh. for um, that and, and whatever God has in store. God is good all the time. So it's all going to work. Jacqueline, do you have any advice for young people who either want to act or want to become filmmakers? And I get uh, students that want to do both, and I get students that don't want to do any of them, uh, any of these activities. They want to be an anthropologist or a, uh, a gymnast or something like that. But um, uh, this, what we do with our workshops is great for any of the students. And the, the, basically, the thing that I would say to them is to um, always follow your dream, never give up, practice, practice, practice. That is so critical. Uh, what we focus on in our workshops are uh, confidence, basically, and self-esteem building through on-camera activities. So the students not only uh, act and learn uh, critical thinking, uh, uh, memorization, when they have to work with the monologues and scripts, they learn uh, behind the scenes, they direct, they learn camera activity, uh, camera operation, uh, audio capture. So they're in front of the camera, they're behind the camera. And um, I, I recall, I think it was, um, I was looking at something on uh, Facebook the other day and it said, if you uh, fall down seven times, get up eight. And that's what I would say to them. If you fall down, if you stumble, do not give up, do not be discouraged. It's a minor step. Get right back up and keep going. Practice, 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 and never give up. Ah, oh, love that, love that. I want to, I want to ask you, Angel, the same question in closing. What advice would you give? Let's just say, special young girls to get into this business of singing and trying to cut records or CDs or what do you call it now? What advice would you give young girls? I definitely would give them to say to them that I really want them to just, most of all, always pray to God, you know, hopefully, if, you know, if they trust and believe in God, you know, to lead and guide them and, you know, believe in their talent. You know, God gives us talent and praise God for these talents so we can, you never know, you may touch the heart of somebody, you know, um, like Jacqueline and, and her movies and her films could touch the heart of someone when, when they, they watch her films, what they may learn from it. You know, and the music the same way, you know, music is, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and, um, and so just as long as you do it for, for the right reasons, you know, not doing it to disrespect or degrade anyone, but just, you know, just believe in yourself and, you know, don't be a procrastinator because some people may say, I want to do it and then they procrastinate, but you know, you got to start somewhere and thank God for social media because now you have social media, you can utilize that to you know, get your music out there and get heard a lot faster than back in the day. And it was when I was in, you know, in the late nineties trying to do it, it was not easy at all. It's easier now. So utilize that and go for it and don't allow anyone to tell you, you can't do it. Cause there's a, a lot of people online that will try to discourage you and say things that will make you feel like, well, then I don't want to do it, you know, but don't listen to the naysayers. Just keep trying just keep going and begin what you have and give God the glory. So your voice can change the world. Angela Sessions and Jacqueline Ivane, thank you for sharing your talents and wisdom. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha.